Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Russ with RWGResearch.com and my wife got me a new hat for a dollar. Anyway, this video, and it's white by the way, this video is about the CR8, Corality 3D CR8 2-in-1 3D printer laser engraver from GearBest.com. That is a lot to say. So in the last video we put this thing together, we took it out of the box, we turned it into what you see here. Now the question is, is does it print? So this video is about printing. The next one will be about the laser. So here are the selection of prints and I'm going to talk about each one of them and see what my thoughts are initially. Now just starting out I can tell you because this thing has a self leveling as in you have to level it when you print it can be a little tedious once I got it up and running the first time it seemed pretty good however because the platform is only rolling on the bottom there uh, that kinda makes it difficult for the platform wanting to walk now I, although I haven't had any issues with that I think if you were to pry on it you know and get that scraper in there and try to get that off I think you might be having some difficulties keeping this thing from getting loose although you can tighten it I just don't like the way that that's set up that's a personal preference it works fine right now but I don't know in long term how well that that is going to be structurally sound so that's okay but uh, the point is is that you do have to level it by yourself and it is tedious and it does take some effort and you gotta kinda know what you're doing um, I did go ahead and set it up with Cura which is what it came with and I didn't really like the way that that was set up so I went ahead and used uh, Simplified 3D in this case just to do some basic tests and I used the Mendel 90 um, settings and I just changed the bed size and that's pretty well it in the start and in G code a little bit um, but really it's the same uh, parameters and it seems to work really well with those parameters so let's get on into the actual prints alright let's talk about the first few prints so this phone stand here or device stand I actually redrew this and uh, that way I could call it uh, my own little version not getting too much trouble I went ahead and put RWG Research in there and I can give these to people. They're fun little things to give to. And they're good for testing uh, speed. So what I did here is if you can see that there's color change. So this is about 40 millimeters per second. And then I turned it up to about 200%. Then I turned it up to about 500% just to see what the printer would do and how it would react. And you can totally tell that there's a different color on here. Now, the faster you went, the sloppier it got. This is a 100 micron height, so I think that has something to do with it. Um, if you were using a little bit thicker height, I, uh, like 200 microns, I think you'd be fine. Um, so the second one, I printed at regular speed. I think it was around 40 millimeters per second. And you can see what the details look on here. They look perfectly fine. No real complaints about that. Um, also, this was printed at 100 microns. So the next thing to print, of course, are some rockets. So here are two rockets that were printed in PLA, by the way, these are all PLA. And um, strangely enough, you can see the, see the fins and you can sort of see the, the lines on the fins. And I don't really know what caused that exactly, but it's, it almost looks like vibrations of the, the way the thing was moving. So this one was printed at 100 micron layer height. And this one was printed at 200 micron layer height. And to be honest with you, although you can tell a tiny bit of difference, um, I actually can't really tell much of a difference at all. Both of these are quite amazing. Uh, the tips obviously got a little squirrely there. And the way that Cura sliced this for vase mode is just strange. I don't really like using it. so. You know, it is what it so, is. So this, my friends, is a really, really, really cool print. I love this print. On the other hand, my wife just absolutely hates it. I mean, it is a lady wearing a bikini with um, some fancy, cool-looking stuff on. I don't know. I think it's a piece of art, but hey, that's just my opinion. Um, this is the Sorceress, and I'll give you a link in the description. I highly recommend go get this model. I, I think this model is really helpful for troubleshooting some stuff. It's got some fine details up here on the top um, with the hands there and it's got some overhangs. 
on her butt there there's some really steep overhangs and on her knees and then here on her arms there's some overhang that's that's beneficial to show some problems and then there's just a lot of detail so I, I really really like this model in general this was printed at a hundred micron layer height and it actually turned out not very good you can see under the arms where there's a lot of just overhang that didn't quite finish right um, and it seems that with a thicker layer this doesn't happen as much so it's almost the opposite of what you'd think where you think you get better resolution and you do the model itself looks like a lot better resolution but the overhangs were having troubles um, so then I went ahead and got simplified 3d to slice this at 200 microns and that's what I'm going to show you now all right, so here is the 200 micron version. This one had a few problems here and there, and I really don't know what was going on with that. But beyond that, um, I made the shell very, very thin, so it's kind of got some holes on top of the legs and in a few other small places. But in general, this print looks fantastic. I can't really complain at all. The underneath side of the arms look amazing. The fingers actually look just amazing I mean I'm completely surprised at how well that the hands printed on this thing much better than the uh, 100 micron but that was also sliced with the uh, Cura engine too so um, you know in general this thing looks pretty darn amazing for what it is and uh, I still love the this print so moving on let's talk about this rocket real quick so you can see that there's some some problems with this rocket so what I did was I actually started speeding this up to the point where the PLA could not cool fast enough and it was giving me some serious problems so I slowed it back down um, to where it looked nice so at the bottom is like 40 millimeters per second then it was slowly faster and faster and faster until I got to the point where it was failing and that was somewhere around um, you know 800 percent of what I was running which is crazy and then I went ahead and let it the same speed all the way to the tip just so you could see how problematic it can be so then I went ahead and printed another one this one's in white and I just let this run regular speed and you can see this thing looks gorgeous all the way to the tip it really looks fantastic so I went ahead and got some red PLA this is translucent red from matter hackers this is their pro series filament i will link it in the description if you want to go get some of this stuff um, this turned out fantastic so what i did was i didn't clean anything off so you could see the the markings and in any of the problems and some of the hairs and there really is hardly any stringing i still had the same um problem it looks like on the z height where some of the extrusion acted a little funny there um, so I don't know if that was the slicing, might have been the slicing itself that, that's causing that, not the printer. So it's kind of odd that it's in the same spot on a totally different version here. It was the same file, just different plastic. So PLA and this printer surface. This printer surface is just a piece of tape um, and the PLA sticks fine to it. It seems like it works okay. I didn't really have any problems with the PLA. So yeah, seems to work pretty good. All right, so the next thing is PTEG. I had some and I wanted to try it. I printed this rocket in PTEG just to see what it would do and it turned out pretty darn good. Um, I think I had some heat problems here where it was too hot and that's probably my fault, but the bottom looks really nice um, and it did stick to the tape just fine, which I was happy about. I raised the temperature up to, I believe, 60 degrees Celsius to do this. The PLA was all at 45. So this, this turned out great. So I thought, let's print a sorceress and it actually finished I was like wow um, it's got a lot of little things hanging off and that's just the way that PETG is now on the model here there's some weird um, banding again and it, I used the same file I just changed the temperature and so uh, the same g-code so I, I, I imagine that the problems I'm having here are actually in the g-code and not necessarily the printer because they're they're in the exact same spot so that's kind of interesting but yeah, this thing worked fine. So I'd say you could print PTEG with this machine, no problem. Now let's see what happened with ABS. As you can imagine, ABS warps like crazy. And when it warps like crazy, things fall off the bed. So this little lady lost her arms. However, the rest of the model actually looks pretty good. Um, it's not perfect by any means, but 
I can't tell you whether or not that is a problem with the printer or the plastic because if you look at the bottom it is nowhere near flat nowhere near flat and that has serious consequences such as the hands breaking off now I will say the rest of the model looks gorgeous it looks fine um, except for probably where it was trying to move around a little bit but in general I think the hands would have finished just as well as the PLA in my opinion still got those problems here I think it must be the g-code I just now noticed that very interesting so then I printed some rockets now both of these rockets actually printed exceptionally well but as you can see they are bowed like crazy I mean just crazy um, and they were barely hanging on to the tape so look how bad that corner is so I imagine I'm gonna have to really work on the uh, bed adhesion um, I used to use glass and put ABS juice on there which is um, acetone and ABS melted together or dissolved as uh, ABS dissolved in acetone is what I used to use on my bed surfaces. So I didn't try that here. I just went ahead and used the tape to see what would happen. And that is a no-go. The tape is, it does not stick to the tape at all. Um, but it does print pretty well. And what's interesting is I actually turned all these up to 99.9%. 909, 999% of speed just to see what would happen. And the top here, of course, just got a little messed up. And I slowed this one down. I printed it real fast, pretty well the entire model, and then slowed it down here. So check out this quick clip of uh, how fast this thing was printing. It's pretty cool. <laughs> So that's all that I did with ABS. Um, this is Zortrax um, ABS. Um, it's expensive stuff. I was trying it for a special purpose for some QSN. So anyway, now the question, will this printer print a QSN? Because that is the ultimate challenge for me. Let's find out. So the ultimate question for the CR8 and any printer I do a review on, will it print a QSN? The answer is yes it will strangely enough this is a pretty darn impressive print now it's not perfect it's got a lot of strings inside there if you really look close they're actually kind of hard to see but you can see that yes indeed there are strings in there but the point is is that this thing actually printed and it looks pretty darn amazing I really can't complain too much considering this is just stock um, this is just PLA and it actually turned out really well so I adjusted some settings I tried to print a second one and this one turned out about the same still had a lot of the strings in there but in general yeah it can actually print a QSN so then I thought well uh, this is just generic PLA so I didn't know how well um, there's definitely some flaws in here by the way but it's pretty exceptional considering so I decided to go ahead and try to print a small one. This is 30%. These are 45% of scale, and this one's 30% uh, 30 of scale. And you can see there is a ton of strings on this thing. I mean a ton. But if you look close at the actual... I had an interruption, but that's okay. So um, anyway, this thing, you know, if you look close at some of these details, uh, yeah, it's pretty amazing. I'm highly... Um, impressed that this thing at least got this far and didn't completely fail. It did finish the whole thing. There's not a missing corner on this guy. It's pretty impressive. So then I thought, well, let's go get the good PLA. This is just generic. I don't even know where this came from. It actually came out of the Ant E-Carry box. Um, and so now I want to know, will the Matter Hackers Green PLA actually print this? Because that's what I've been using for most of my stuff. Uh, again, links in the description for that plastic because I really like this stuff. And this is where the problems began. So I put in the green Matter Hackers PLA, and this is what I got out of it. Now, I must actually say that before it started having its problems, it looks pretty good. 
it's not perfect, but it's pretty good. And uh, all right, guys. So I was printing a QSN here, and I turned the temperature down five degrees from 200 to 195. And when I came home, I found the spool of filament completely disconnected from the printer, and this is basically all I got. So after doing some investigation, I ground off the actual filament in the extruder motor. So when that happened, here's the gear. That little pulley wheel ground into the little brass gear and made some notches in it, which isn't a huge problem. But as you can see, there's no tensioner on here. It's just wide open. There's no, this is a solid piece. There's no way to add any adjustment here. So, if it's soft filament and it ground into it because of the retractions that are going crazy, um, it basically ate into the filament. So, I'm going to try to do this again, but the problem is I pulled the tube out, which apparently goes all the way into the hot end. I pulled it out and it's stuck. The material stuck right here at the end, so I may try to heat this tube and soften it and pushing it back out. But basically, I've got my filament stuck in here. So yeah, just thought I'd show you that while I had it apart and kind of the issue I ran into. Now, normally I don't suspect this would be a problem, but because there's so many retractions here, uh, it just sort of didn't do so hot. So after. Uh Messing with that for a while, as you can tell, was really problematic, and the filament was actually s flattening and getting stuck in the tube. Um, I don't think it was anything else. I think it was just getting jammed in the tube. So I got that problem resolved, and I thought, all right, let's try another one. Here's the result. Same problem, but much further in. By the way, these took a lot longer to print. Again, look at the detail. It's pretty exceptional, considering this is a very inexpensive printer. Alright, this is nothing special, it's just, you know, a very inexpensive printer. And, you know, they got it They got it pretty good, it's, it seems to work very well. Now what's interesting about this is that these stopped at almost the exact right time to actually finish the QSN, so technically I can uh, I can pull a Nerdville here and I can glue the top on. <laughs> if you don't know what I'm talking about, I'll link that video in the description. Nerdville. He gave his thing a really, really good shot. Go check out his videos. A quick uh, shout out to my friend. Uh, really, really fun, fun videos. Make some awesome stuff. And he did some pretty fun stuff with this, which is comical to watch too. Uh, anyway, so yeah, it'll print a QSN, but you've got some problems here with the plastic and how this thing extrudes out of here. And uh, I don't know. That's uh, this is just sort of a way to break a printer if you want to, if it doesn't work right. And this proves the point right here. You know, this is a good stress test for retraction. Really, is what it is. Um, it's also a good test for all of the stringing involved and how fine-tuned you can get your printer. Um, I didn't spend too much time tuning this, um, so it could potentially be better, but in general, just de depending on what type of plastic you use, um, you're either going to come out with something that's finished or something that, you know, you have to glue together. Ah! Alright, so those are my final thoughts. Um, so do I recommend this printer to you? Well, actually, uh, it's pretty good. I'm, I'm, I'm pleasantly surprised. I really wish it had auto bed leveling feature. That really is the number one complaint that I have right now, I think, is just getting that tuned is such a just problematic thing. Um, I think that you're if you're if, if you're brand new to 3D printing, this printer is probably not the best option for you. Um, you really got to kind of know what you're doing. You got to know how to set up the bed. You can learn all these things. There's a few instructions on the SD card of how to do this stuff. But in general, I think if you've never done it before, you'd have a lot of questions without answers. But that's just my personal opinion. Um, if you have a little common sense, you can probably figure it out. Um, but in general, um, I recommend this printer to somebody who just wants a, a printer laser engraver that has some experience at least with 3D printing, and then this might be the right machine for you. Um, I really, I've actually had a pleasure using it. Um, it's kind of a weird form factor because I've been so used to uh, the Ant E carry here, which I still highly recommend for a PLA only machine at the moment. Um, 
it's just that one's just so much more compact but again this has a 210 by 210 by 210 millimeter build volume where the other one here has only 150 um, so it depends on what you want you know and you can print uh, um, ABS but you're gonna have to work on the the bed adhesion but that's always problematic with ABS no matter where you're at in life <laughs> So there you go. I hope you guys uh, enjoyed this. And again, links down in the description for this thing. And the next video, we're going to be playing with lasers. That's going to be a lot of fun. I am still very impressed that it printed a QSN. And it did a pretty darn good job. So thumbs up. God bless you guys. Have a good day. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. And if you have questions, comments, concerns about this printer, please leave them in the comments. And I'll try to answer any questions you have. So on to the laser.